Hello, and thank you for joining us today for this OncLive Peer Exchange panel discussion on the management of advanced melanoma. We continue to generate exciting data in the field of melanoma that includes achieving long-term survival like we haven't seen before. Today, I'm joined by a group of renowned experts in the field who are working hard every day to find answers to the most important questions we face in the field, such as how do I help the next patient who comes into my office to live a little bit longer while making sure that the therapies that I treat them with are not worse than the disease. In this OncLive peer exchange discussion, we'll provide perspective on the latest research and share practical advice that applies to the clinic. My name is Dr. Jeffrey Weber, and I'm the Deputy Director of the Laura and Isaac Perlmutter Cancer Center and Professor of Medicine at the NYU Langone Medical Center in New York City. Joining our distinguished panel are Dr. Robert Ann Baca, who's an Associate Professor in the Department of Surgery at the University of Utah and Co-Director of the Melanoma Clinical Research Program at the Huntsman Cancer Institute in Salt Lake City. Dr. Michael Davies, who's an Associate Professor and Deputy Chair of the Department of Melanoma Medical Oncology at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. Dr. Georgina Long, who's a Professor of Melanoma Medical Oncology and Translational Research at the Melanoma Institute of Australia at the University of Sydney in Sydney, Australia. And Dr. Jason Luke, who's an Assistant Professor of Medicine at the University of Chicago in Chicago, Illinois. Thank you all again for joining us. Let's begin. We're going to start by thinking about melanoma, local regional, adjuvant, advanced, metastatic, and then we'll talk about new drugs. So I'd like to start talking about an issue that came up at the oral melanoma session here at ASCO, where we talked about the definition of resectability. So Robert, what are the criteria for deciding if a melanoma patient is resectable? How do you think about that? So I think it's, um, it's actually a very difficult question to answer, Jeffrey. And I think that the resectability really depends on in the who is looking at it. It's really in the eye of the beholder. And uh, I think for me as a surgical oncologist, I really look at the, uh, the usefulness of surgical resection. If I do the surgical resection, is that going to be a meaningful resection for the patient in the ability to cure the patient for their disease? So for instance, uh, patients that have in-transit disease, if they have a few small in-transit lesions, we would consider that to be surgical resectable. However, in many of our patients, they may have a large group of in-transit lesions, and although we could take them surgically out, it really would not be a meaningful surgical resection because the risk of recurrence is so high outside of that surgical field. The same thing also applies to patients with metastatic lymph nodes. So if the patient has a small amount of disease that we found on central lymph node biopsy, for instance, we would then recommend taking out the rest of the lymph nodes. However, in patients that have large bulky disease, we often consider them um, for surgical resection. But I think the challenge there is that many of them, although we could surgically take them out, the risk of that local regional recurrence is very high. So features that clearly make something unresectable in the, um, from a lymph node perspective is if you have involvement of vessels, involvement of nerves, that you would have to take vessels and nerves. In that situation, although we could surgically take it out, I don't think that that's a meaningful surgical resection for the patient. However, patients who have one lymph node that has metastatic disease in it, uh, we can often surgically resect that. And then another issue that certainly arises at my institution and probably at all of your institutions is what do you do when a patient has a sentinel lymph node biopsy and has a positive sentinel node? Do you always do a completion lymphadenectomy? And Robert, why don't we start with you, but maybe we should solicit some other opinions. I'm very curious how it goes at other institutions. What are the criteria for a completion lymphadenectomy? So I think until recently, we would recommend everyone to undergo a completion lymph node dissection for several reasons. Is that we know that the patients have a uh, between 8 and 50% risk of having additional lymph nodes with melanoma in them in that lymph node basin. I think what is challenging is really try to determine who are the patients that actually will have additional disease. And there are a number of studies, mostly retrospective studies, that have been conducted to try to determine that. And we know that features such as the breast thickness of the primary tumor, the amount of melanoma in that sentinel lymph node, and also the number of sentinel lymph nodes that are removed influences this. In other words, if you have a thicker tumor, you have more disease in the sentinel lymph node, and also if you have one versus three sentinel lymph nodes being removed, the risk is higher. Now, I think that the landscape is changing, and I think that we have the DECOG study that came out from Germany where they followed patients with an ultrasound versus doing a completion lymph node dissection. 
I think one of the challenges with that study is that they wanted to have about 1,200 patients enrolled, but they only had 400, a bit over 400 patients that were enrolled onto the study. So I think that it did not meet the cruel. Um, in that study, though, we know that the local recurrence rate is higher if you don't do a completion of a dissection, but it does not seem to affect the risk of distant metastases-free survival or potentially the overall survival for the patient. The MSLT2 study, which is a much larger study that was done internationally and will be, um, uh, is coming out shortly. And uh, When will we know those results? Because the MSLT2 study would seem critical to how we manage the patient. We will know those results on June 8, 2017. Ah. Yeah, in the New England Journal of Medicine. Fantastic. Yes. Sounds like you already know the data. I do know the data, but it's embargoed for this taping, so I can't reveal all of that. Of course. <laughs> yes. But what I can say is that I think though that the landscape will change, and it already has changed in many places across the United States, that, that in many institutions they no longer do a completion in no dissection. Having said that, I think we have to be careful though. I think that there clearly are patients that have a large amount of tumor in those sentinel lymph nodes, and the risk of having additional disease is very high. If they have a recurrence, that recurrence can become locally quite difficult to treat. In addition, I think we have to remember that every adjuvant trial that we have had so far for patients with metastatic melanoma have required a completion of lymph node dissection. So we truly don't know the use of adjuvant therapy in patients who have not had a completion of lymph node dissection. Right, that's a very good point. So, Georgina, you work in a place that is a classically multidisciplinary clinic with some very impressive surgeons. So do all patients with a positive sentinel node at MIA, at Melanoma Institute of Australia, get a completion of adenectomy, or do you pick and choose who to uh, have the surgeons operate on? So um, our surgeons, uh, very much like what Robert said, uh, classically we would recommend a completion lymph node dissection if at central node biopsy there was melanoma involved in that node. However, just as Robert said, things are evolving and changing right now, uh, particularly with the MSLT2 results, and it will be a discussion with the patient in terms of risk of further lymph node involvement, and also uh, recurrence in a local site. Although it may not be the cause of death, um, it is pretty morbid. So therefore, it'll be all about the risk of further lymph node involvement and the volume at central node biopsy, which will determine the completion lymph node uh, dissection. But at this point, until the data is widely available and known, uh, yes, we would normally recommend a completion lymph node dissection after discussion with the patient about the risk of lymphedema and the um, proposed benefits of the surgery. Yeah, so not only the results of MSLT2, but I think the fact that now emerging adjuvant therapies seem very effective at prolonging survival may change that.